Hey, man, shout out to the bro. Fat meat is crazy, man. Hey, look, shout out to the tribe. I know you vibing up. I know you're doing the right thing, man. I know you holding it down. I know you are seeing the clearer picture that this is all about your release date. This is all about your freedom. But if you don't even have the overstanding that you're in captivity, if you think that spending, you know, paper and plastic currency is normal, where's your gold? Where's your things? Where's your lamb, Anaga? That comes with a pure water connection to the creator who's created you to be the head, not the tail. So what's happening, man? I mean, what's coming to a hood near you, man? Shout out to New York City. Hey, look, it's a lot going on in this quarantine. <laughs> and you could choose to be, you know, in it. If you have a place to go, you could at least be more outside of it. You know what I'm saying? So about getting the, the clear picture. Shout out to the bro AD, man. Able to have a, a nice clear water, you know what I'm saying, perspective session, man. And, you know, put some things in place for the tribe. A hop to all the contributors, man, keeping the water flowing for us. All the ways you're doing it. All the ways you're finding ways to do it. I appreciate you. We appreciate you. Allah Hawa. Because all we know right now is that this is chestnut checkers. No matter how old, uh, Someone is you talk to, they have never been through something quite like this. And I'm just talking about the reaction and the solution they're saying is coming, right? Because they create the problem, orchestrate the reaction, and then offer the solution. And what's the solution? Tanks in your streets, man. BGS, what it do, man? Is it play, play? I mean, for real, for real. It's a play play. Oh man, let go, man. They over here trying to get out. Hijack City. Hijack City. Jackson. <laughs> all right, hi, Jack City. All right, all right, all right. I know you don't like us, uh, you know, digging around on the meaning of things, but we're just trying to get to the root. You know what I'm saying? We're just trying to get to the root. Love to the bro, you know, man. <laughs> Got to get to the root of it all. And again, man, get in the classroom of BGS, I-B-M-O-R. I mean, look, man, if you don't see that this is clearly about you, and it's not about you, my naga, in terms of being, you know what I'm saying, some type of, uh, you know, victim, you know, this is about, you know, something happening in your favor. We're going to get some great drop from the bro, man, uh, Dana Stevens, man. <laughs> And he says, hey, man, I'm a Gentile, but I got something to say. I got something to say. I should be grafted into your tree. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna touch on that. But most of all, we're going to get the positive message of getting out the fear spell. And I agree with where he's going with it because there's a lot of fear spell going on. A lot of people afraid to move, afraid to flow. You know what I'm saying? Afraid to, you know, get out of Egypt. Afraid of ending your captivity. You know, I've seen this before, man. I've seen this before, man. Behind the wall, you see. If you ever been behind a wall in any situation of captivity, my knock it. <laughs> Some brothers have been there so long that they're kind of like nervous about, you know, a little apprehensive about getting out in the streets. They don't really know where the situation really lies anymore. You know, everything sort of passed them by a little bit. They don't know where they stand where, you know what I'm saying, some folks, some relationships, you know what I mean, or now they got to be responsible, man, for, you know, making a living on their own. And not just that, but providing for the families and children. It's a lot of responsibilities. Sometimes, man, being behind the wall, you know, you got a whole nother life, a whole nother world going on back you know, behind the wall. And 
what you don't got is, you know, having to necessarily, you know, uh, you know, have this job or that job because you're behind the wall. Now you could work and get, you know, slave labor money, you know what I mean? Maybe 25 cents a week or something like that. You know what I mean? But, you know, for the most part, you got things in place, so you try to hustle things in place to take care of your family, right? But you out that responsibility, you know, then quadruples, right? Because now you out, so you ex- more is expected of you. And a lot of bros feel a little ap- apprehensive about it. I've seen it, man. I've seen it. Like, yo, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Shout out to my bro Choo Choo, man. My bro Choo Choo out here, man. You know what I'm saying? When Choo Choo was about to get out, Choo Choo was like, you know, he, he was, you know, He's normally, man, the loudest in the bunch, you know what I mean? Always cracking jokes, you know what I mean? Just, you know, big, you know, big, you know what I'm saying? You know, straight up soldier, you know what I'm saying? Big boy, big boy. But, man, them last couple of days, man, before the bro got out, man, he was sitting by himself and yada, yada. And uh, his last name was uh, Ross, man. So I, w- I would, you know, show him different things about the roots, you know what I'm saying? And. We got the books in uh, from the Anatoly for Manko. We got a lot of books about the, uh, you know what I'm saying, history or science fiction. You know what I mean? Where it was breaking down the roots and the Ross. And he was really digging that. So we would have like daily sessions just talking about the roots and Ross and, you know what I mean, all the connection with that. And yeah, he, you know, he had a lot of fear about the unknown. And that's where we at right now. And that's where the Hebrews were before getting out of captivity. There was a lot of fear of the unknown, my not. So we're going to get on that fear spell. We're going to get to this Dayton Stevens in a minute. And we're going to, you know, touch on a familiar document just a little bit and just let y'all surf the wave because we're going to be right here for you, man. We're going to get to Preston John 60. I mean, if the Naga got to sit down, if the Naga got to have a little sit down, remember, this is about your release day. You've been through your captivity. This judgment coming is not for you. You've been judged. Everybody's witness your judgment. We're going to get script after script after script about the release date of Israel. Now that you know who you are, my knock. The originator, the originals. The seed, the frequency, the spiral. Going straight to the throne room. No barrier. No hijacks allowed. Only one savior. And that's Hawaii. All others going through any other hijack to find some savior. Oh, this is my savior. That's my savior. Oh, without this person, this entity, I can't get grafted into this tree. <laughs> you, you, I mean, we're we going to get it. <laughs> that's your savior. Cause that's your only connection to getting grafted into the tree. Like Christopher Columbus is their savior because that was their only connection to getting life. They were dying and literally my Naga, without your help, they would have died all. That's a fact. They came over here dying without your help or, you know, somebody's help that looked like you. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, we, a lot of us had pity, right? We had, we had compassion. You see what that got us? Wakey, wakey. We got tanks in the street, right? <laughs> now we got tanks in the street, man. So let's get this, man. Let's get this, you know, just a piece of this. Hawa, the word that came to Jeremiah, when Jeremiah 30 from Hawa saying, thus speaks Hawa, thus speaks Hawa, the power of Israel saying, write thee all the words that I have spoken unto you in a book for lo, the days come. Says Hawa that I will turn the captivity of my people, Israel and Judah. Says Hawa, I will turn the captivity. Let me not uh, gloss over this key factor because this right here is the turn of your captivity. By the way, happy harvest, my naga. Happy harvest season. You know, we celebrate a brand new year because it's the harvest season. It just makes sense, right? In reality. And, you know, big things be popping in harvest season, you know, if you just look back at our captivities, right? So I'm going to turn the captivity. I'm going to turn the captivity. You know, you used to be the head, now you're the tail. You got turned. <laughs> you got turned out, upside down, inside out. Now you're getting turned back, right? You're flipping back around. 
Hawaii is turning the captivity of Israel, of my people Israel and Judah. Says Hawaii, and I will cause them to return to the land that I gave their fathers, and they shall possess it. But now, what does it mean to return to the land that you get on the boat and go to Africa? Is that is that your only conception? Because that's the only thing that's been, you know, pumped into our head. Let's go across the seas to go face to face with the creator, because that's where the creator must meet us across the seas. Get your passport and go across the seas. You are firm, facing and move. This is the original. You are the original in the original. And to return to your land, we get lost in translation, thinking you got to go somewhere. You are already home. But if you don't have the mentality of who you are, you're not home. Now you're a foreigner. You've been a foreigner on your own land. And even Martin Luther King told you, told the Naga that much. He said, man, they find you, you find yourself brandished. <laughs> you found yourself banished on your own land. The Naga finds himself, you know, in captivity right now on his own land. Now it's time to return to your land. To return to your land is to see face to face with your land, to see eye to eye with your land, to bond with Ama, to bond with Mama. Now you've returned to the land. You've returned to your land. You could be standing on your land and not be eye to eye, heart to heart, spiral to spiral, frequency to frequency with your creator and the land of the creator. To return to the creator is to return to your land. You can't have one without the other. You got to keep the code. You got to keep the code. And I will cause them to return to the land. Face to face, heart to heart, spiral to spiral. That I gave their fathers and they shall possess it. Because Hawa possesses you. You possess your land. You possess your inheritance, my noggin. And these are the words that Hawa spoke concerning Israel and concerning Judah. For thus says Hawa, we have heard a voice trembling of fear and not of peace. We're talking about breaking the fear spell. Ask you now and see whether a man does travail with child. Wherefore do I see every man with his hands on his loins as a woman in travail and all the faces are turned into paleness. Well, by definition, paleness is black. <laughs> all the faces are pale. You see that right now. You see us going through unprecedented times with a bunch of pale faces, a bunch of paleness, astonishment. People are afraid. We're spreading the 5G fear frequency everywhere. Verse 7, alas, for the day is great, so that none is like it. I just said you could talk to a, you know, old person, you know, in their 90s, 80s, don't matter. They're going to tell you, I've never been quarantined. They got to be over 100 for that. <laughs> hey, look, man, the day is great. There is none like it. And it is a time of trouble unto Jacob. Yeah, you and your fear. Yeah, you and your feelings. Yeah, you angry. Yeah, you, you scared. You know what I mean? But, but out of it shall he be saved, my naga. Knowing that you have a savior. Isaiah 53, there's only one. We're going to get that. Who's going to save you? How does Hawaii save David? Let's go. And it shall come to pass in that day, says Hawaii, I will break his yoke, yoke from off his neck. What yoke have you had on your neck? I just told you. You've been dealing with paper and plastic. You have no land. You're a servant of the system. And everybody knows it. You could be a millionaire, quadrillionaire. It don't matter. Because they'll just quarantine you as they're doing these players right now. Your money can't save you. Who's your savior? Because it says in verse 7, but out of it shall he be saved. Who's your savior? 
What's rule number one in the code? Put no power before your power. Can't no one else save you. Calling on something else, going a whole detour route is not what, we, what, what we've been called to do. It is not what Israel has been, you know, given within our ruach to flow with, to call on something else and go through anything else when he will be saved. Who is our savior? So in this moment now, who's your savior? Because, I mean, it's good to have a plan. It's good to prep. It's good to stock up. Is that toilet paper going to save you? Is the cash, is the, is the, is the house, is, is your RV, is your guns, your ammunition, is that going to save you? But you, you will be saved. Who's going to save you? Let's go. And it shall come to pass in that day, says Hawa, I will. I will. He didn't say Jesus going to save you. <laughs> he didn't say David is going to save you. He didn't say Michael is going to save you. He didn't say no one's going to save you but me. I will break his yoke from off thy neck and will burst thy bands. All right? And strangers shall no more make him their bondman. But we're going to get into this Dana Stevens video. He's going to talk about the strangers, the, the, the Gentile cleaving to the house of Israel because of Yahawashai, because of Yeshua, because of of their Joshua. We got our own Joshua. They got a duplicate Joshua. Both have 12 disciples, right? Joshua gets, you know, one uh, one man from every tribe, 12 tribes. This Jesus just starts plucking people out. And somehow the people that he plucks out are so, you know, literate and, you know, such amazing, you know what I'm saying, uh, orators and writers that they write the entire gospels, right? Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John get plucked out and they just happen to be super orator writers that are, you know, beautifully, you know, <laughs> putting these gospels together because they wrote them, right? Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Or is that another, you know, person through a person through a person? Meanwhile, you got Joshua dealing face to face with Hawa, Joshua. That's literally anointed through Moshe, as Moshe lays his hands on Joshua in Deuteronomy 30, 34, 36, as Moshe is passing on, he lays his life force into Joshua. Now you got the prophecy of Joshua and the Dead Sea Scrolls. And we got the prophecy of Joshua, get the drop. And in the prophecy of Joshua, he's prophesying about King David taking the throne. I said, is that Jesus prophesying about King David? How could that be? How could Jesus prophesy about King David when that's supposed to be way later, right? Jesus is after David. How could he be prophesying about future King David taking the throne? Or are we talking Joshua prophesying about King David taking the throne? And is there a prophecy that David will take this earthly throne again? Will rise again? Let's go. But they shall serve for a while their power and David their king, whom I will raise up unto them. You know, you want to wiggle out of this? Because we either, either we go to Hosea 3 and 5 saying the children of Israel will return, see Kawa and David, their con their priest king, their Wang Khan, their Hakka, their script over and over again saying that David will return, Ezekiel 37, Ezekiel 34, we're in Jeremiah 30, Hosea 3 and 5, the children of Israel will return and seek Hawa and David. But they shall serve Hawa, their power, 
and David their king whom I will raise up unto them. All right, all right, let's go back. Let's go back. Let's go back. Because, you know, they create the problem. They offer, uh, they orchestrate this reaction. That's what we're getting right now. You know, fear, quarantine, yada, yada. They start using big, fancy words. You know, they got brand new words for warships now. Let's just hear it. For a major disaster declaration, something which uh, Governor Cuomo has been asking for and which I... And we had it uh, done in very rapid fashion. Uh, Hi, Jack City. Yeah, we already know we this approved uh, this on Friday evening, and we are working very, very hard to uh, get all of these things uh, not only signed up, but completed and finished and, and win. <laughs> the request from the state of Washington for a major disaster declaration was approved. Uh, just a little while ago, went through the process and we moved it very quickly. The request from the state of California was just received and we will have it approved very quickly. We'll be working. I told that to Gavin Newsom uh, and we are uh, we're working on getting. I mean, do you all see this puppet show? These guys are like robots. You know, what I mean, they're like robots. Do you trust these eyes? Do you trust these eyes to put you in quarantine? to tell you two weeks or two months or, come on, man. We're in unprecedented times, you know what I mean? It's time to really put a plan together to really try, but you know what I'm saying? Hey, how to everybody has got at me, you know what I mean? With, you know, different solutions or different connections. And I look forward to connecting to everybody, man. You know what I mean? Hijack freak, man, you know what I'm saying? And uh, I mean, all praise our creator, man, for this time to try, but man, so. Continue to get at me, music at 432thedrop.com. If you want to specifically support our land, choose up village, get at me, choose up at 432thedrop.com. You know, I'm checking both emails. I will get back to you and let's build this thing. We got it for a reason. Let's build this thing, Drop Nation. Let's see our flow through. Let's see our spiral. You know what I'm saying? Hit the mark, hit that makir, hit that towel. Now let's decipher the puppet show. that done very quickly it'll be done maybe tonight we've large uh, we have large quantities of medical equipment and supplies on the way based on metal medical equipment and supplies now you can say oh that's all medical that's this how slick they are just sliding in supplies supplies you just seen the tanks running down the street that's the supplies but not that's the supplies you see the supplies supplies can mean anything right Come on. And all of this to those states, including respirators, surgical masks and gowns, face shields, coveralls and gloves with large quantities already delivered to Washington and to New York. In addition to large quantities of supplies, I've also directed FEMA to supply the following four large federal medical stations with 1000 beds for New York. Look how slick. This serpent tongue, this forked tongue is four medical stations. They're talking about warships. They talking about battleships, my not battleships, my not battleships, battle tested, battle ready, battle approved. You know what I mean? Battleships, they're calling what? Listen up. Eight large federal medical stations with two federal medical stations. Shit you never heard of. What's a federal medical station? What's a federal medical station? It's a battleship. So you got one popping up in New York, one popping up in California. This is an invasion. Whose invasion? What invasion? Does it got anything to do with the link that we dropped a while back, you know, with the Pope Francis drop, you know, talking to Obama, saying cease and desist, all this landlord, minor business, the majors are taking this shit back over. We're trying to protect our property. Who is the Negro? And they gonna call you up by name. 
2,000 beds for California and three large federal medical stations and four small federal medical stations with battleships. 1,000 beds for the state of Washington. The governors know. Hey, man, don't get on them boats, man. My naga, don't get on them boats, man, because the tanks is coming down your street. Don't, don't, don't just jump on these boats, man. Thinking they're going to help you. Because what we talking about? You got the link. Pull it up. The Grand Army, right? This is that letter, you know? It could be something. It could be nothing. You know what I mean? It could be something. It could be nothing. Pope Francis sends Obama a powerful letter via turn. Okay, okay. Stay out the way. All right, all right. Make it small. There we go. Let's do that. Let's do that. All right, here we go. I'm learning, man. I, I got to keep getting these new screen recording systems because they all crash on me, man. And, you know, I already know what that's about. So here we go again with another screen recorder system, man, just to get the drop to you. All right, Pope Francis sends Obama a powerful letter via turn. 2014, Independence Day, right? Get all the drive, pull it up. We're just going to get the first couple paragraphs, and then I'm going to get the dismount so you know that they're talking specifically to you when it comes to this war and what's happening specifically, just like we got in Jeremiah 30. Alas, for the day is great, so there's none like it. It is a time of trouble unto Jacob, but out of it he shall be saved. So, again, who's your savior? Who's your savior, my nut? Who's your savior? It's very important to notice, you know. It's very important to, you know, say, you know what, man, if I don't have anything else, if I got nothing else, I have the creator of the heaven, the creator of the earth, creator of all the, you know, etheric flow. You know what I'm saying? I got the flow. I got the dracon. And I know how the creator protects his anointed. I mean, it's been proven. It's been proven time and time again. Who's your savior? Verse 7, he was oppressed, though he humbled himself and opened not his mouth as a lamb that is led to the slaughter and as a sheep that before her shears is dumb. Yet he opened not his mouth by oppression and judgment. He was taken away. And with this generation, who did reason? For he was cut off from the land of the living for transgressions of my people to whom the stroke was due. And they made his grave with the wicked and the rich his tomb. Although he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased Hawa to crush him by disease, to see if his soul would offer itself in restitution, that he might see his seed prolong his days. Now, this is what the, the Christians, right? <laughs> the Christianites, they go here to say, oh, this must be JC. Because yet it pleased the Lord to crush him by disease to see if his soul would offer itself a restitution. I just ask you one question. What happened to Ezekiel? Was Ezekiel crucified? Ezekiel was crucified for 430 days. Remember, he had to lay on one side for 300 and something, something days, then for another 70 days on the other side, 360 or 70 over here, 430 days, eating cow dung, <laughs> bound to the floor. Yet it pleased Hawa to crush him by disease to see if his soul would offer itself to restitution. Did he ever say, my Lord, you forsaken me? Why have you forsaken me? Nah, he didn't say nothing. He endured. Ezekiel, he endured that he might see his seed prolong his days and that the purpose of Hawa might prosper in his hand 
of the travail of his soul, he shall see to the fool, even my servant, who by his acknowledge, by his knowledge did justify the righteous one to the many and their iniquities he did bear, who bore the sins of Israel. Now, if your ass is on the street, they're going to say Jesus. But Ezekiel had to bear the sins of Israel. Lay on one side for every year of the sin of Israel, 360 days and another 70 days for Judah on the other side, 430 days straight bound to the floor, eating dung. 430 days of crucifixion, not just one day or two days or three days, 430 days of being bound to the floor. Can't move for the sins of Israel. Who bore the sins of Israel? You know, it's very interesting to look at how the supernaga was constructed and how the brainwash got put in our head bone. We forget about Ezekiel bearing the sins of Israel for 430 years. We jump right to JC. Oh, he was hung from a tree. Book of Acts, chapter 5. Well, a lot of nagas were hung from a tree. Are we talking crucifixion? I said, my Nagas, who's your savior? Isaiah 43. Who's your savior, my Naga? <laughs> you are my witnesses, says Hawaii, and my servant whom I have chosen, that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me there was no God formed, neither shall it be after me. Jesus is God, neither shall there be after me. There is no God for, but Jesus is God. He's God in the flesh. Maybe that's the schism of 1054. They have to get you to believe that. Go back to the Egyptian, you know what I'm saying? Horus, Isis, Virgin, Immaculate Conception. Rise in three days. Before me there was no God for, no power, neither shall it be after me. Even I, a wah, and beside me there is no Savior. Who's the Savior of Israel? Who bore the sins of Israel? Isaiah 53. Who bore the sins of Israel? Who's the Savior of Israel? There is no savior besides a walk. So even when we get to this Dana Stevens, and I appreciate the work of Dana Stevens, so this ain't no, but there ain't no savior. Oh. My noggin, there ain't no savior. <laughs> there ain't no savior. There ain't no savior except that energy, that frequency, that source that you are natural by law connected to. Love to the Aki, you know what I'm saying? Love to all the Ox and Aquas, man, all my sisters and brothers, because we're just surfing away, putting this together. But first, we need to know, rule number one, keep the code, no power. <coughs> no power before your power. Sorry, y'all, it's five in the morning, man. I ain't slept yet, because I got this on my heart, bro. Let's go. <laughs> I, even I, am a wine beside me. There is no Savior, nothing. No one else can save you. King David can't save you. King David will rise again. King David will rule again. Because that's his that's that's the function. That's the prester. That's the that's the priest king. Priest and king. He's anointed by the creator. What king after was anointed specifically by the creator? Specifically. Hand picked. Because this David comes from this Yeshai, this Jesse, who was a sinless man. Along with Benjamin, right? <laughs> sinless man. Along with uh, Amram, Moses' pops. Sinless man. You dig? Along with Daniel, King David's boy, Kiliab. Sinless man. So you got a seed, you got a flow. I, even I am Hawa beside me, my Naga. There is no savior. So don't don't think no one else that you can get grafted in to our tree 
because there is no other savior. So that was a hoax. That's a game. If you want to be grafted into the tree, do what you're doing. You know what I'm saying? Just, just, you know, r raise up Israel without you having to graft yourself in. Just try that, uh, Mr. Gentiles, you know, Miss Gentile, whatever, you know, whoever thinks that they have some right to be grafted in to this flow as if you went to captivity with us. Now you get a piece of this because you're nice, because you're saying the right things, because you got some level of knowledge to give to the people about who they are. But you bring them right back to Zeus, e Zeus. What New Testament? You know, when our New Testament comes, when we are, you know, plucked out of captivity. It don't come because the Greeks, you know, want us to have a, a whole new excellent new tune or the Romans or whatever you want to call it. The church, the Catholics. But we're just talking the car, the Katai, the Katai, the Katai. The pure land, the pure ones. I'm just talking about you. And they're hijacking your titles. And they're telling you that you got another savior. And beside me, there is no savior. Now, you know Psalms 18. We got it before. Hawa comes down with smoke out of his nose, fire out of his mouth. How How is Hawa going to save you this time? Because beside Hawa, there's no other savior. How did he save David? Let's get it. Man, all praise for why. There ain't no time. There ain't no time. There ain't no time, man. Only the way. There ain't no time, man. Only the way. How does Hawaii, you know, since David will rise again, since there's a connection, since we got a connection here, let's get it, man. How does Hawa save David, man? Let's go. You see that man? They on the man. They like to be on that play play. You know what I mean? If I was over here watching Alter Carbon, I could stream it perfectly. As soon as I start getting this drop, you know, I gotta go through these. You know what I mean? All right, all right. It's all good. It's all good. Ain't no time, man. Only the way. Psalm of David, right? And he said, I love thee, O Hawa, my strength. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, my deliverer. Again, there's no savior but me. Who does David call on? Some other entity? Is there a scripture that says later there's going to be another entity and you're going to go through him and his blood is going to save all these Gentiles because now they got a right because of Zeus. Zeus gives them a right. This, this 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 new Joshua, this new Yeshua gives them a right to be a part of this flow, of this frequency, of this swag. You want this swag? You got to go through something, homie. You got to go through something. You can't walk on the set talking about I'm a part of the set. If you want to rock with the creator, just rock with the creator. Don't even ask to be grafted into the tree. Just do the right thing and help Israel be the head, not the tail. Teach them who they are. Don't even talk about being grafted into the tree. Don't even talk about, you know what I'm saying, your inheritance now being our inheritance and all this shit. That now just sounds like I'm being hijacked again. You know what I'm saying? Who's our deliverer? Who's my deliverer? David calls on Hawa. And how does Hawa come? Let's go. The earth did shake and quake. Smoke arose from his nostrils. Fire out of his mouth did devour. Now that connects with that Zechariah 12. Let it come fresh. That Zechariah 12. Cause you got the fire out of his mouth. Coals flame for him. He bowed the head. The heavens came down. Thick darkness under his feet. He rode on the cherub. Did fly. He flew on the wings of the wind. Nostrils had smoke. Mouth had fire. Fire out of his mouth. Remember that Zechariah 12, right? Let's go. Let the con fresh go. Let the con fresh go. 
in that day will I make the governors or the chiefs of Judah like a hearth of fire among the wood, fire out of his mouth, and like a torch of fire in a sheaf, and they shall devour fire, devour, Psalms 18, devour all the people round about on the right hand and on the left and Jerusalem shall be inhabited again in her own place again. You're going to be inhabiting your land again. You're going to return face to face, eye to eye, Ruach to Ruach with your land, with your power, with your creator. You shall devour like a torch of fire. Fire out of his mouth did devour. They shall devour all the people. Fire. Fire. Fire out of his mouth. Every night I got a dragon. This is going to be beautiful. I need you to rejoice. Just like the bro Dana Stevens is about to say right now, he's about to get it. It's time for you to rejoice. It's time for you to rejoice, man. Because this judgment ain't for you. It's time for you to get over your fears. Get what you need to get. Try up with who you got to try up with. You know what I mean? Just make sure that you are first off in the vibration. You know what I mean? That comes before all your weapons and all your toilet paper. Your vibration comes first, man. So let's go ahead and get it, man. Let's go ahead and get this drop, man, from... Uh, Dana, Dana Stevens, man. And get in the classroom. Got a lot of good drop to share. A lot of good drop to share. And we're going to get it from here. Now we we'll get it from the top. Let's go. Shalom, shalom to all of my incredible. Shalom. Shalom to the tribe, man. Let's go. Precious man. chosen people. Let's dig on. Most high. And I'm greeting you and you alone tonight because what I want to share with you as you know we're all in a state of being in quarantine and social distancing and here in Chicago uh, tonight, which is Sunday, March 22nd, 2020, we are in a shelter in place. And you know, now that we are home and, uh, you know, in some degrees we, we wished for this, but under the circumstances, it's not, it's getting old. And then as we sit home and there's no sports going on, there's no, you know, other music programs like American Idol or The Voice or any of those things going on or, uh, yeah, forbid we watch some of those reality shows that are, you know, ending due to the effects of this coronavirus. And so as I am on, the internet, Facebook. I see these posts coming. And mostly shared by those of you who are Hebrews. Of look what's to come, get ready. And as I see these posts and read them, I just sense the spirit of fear and also anger. And based what I am saying is nothing of judgment about your fear and anger, but to only speak to what I believe the Most High Yah poured upon my heart tonight, just moments before now, 
to share to you, my Hebrew brothers and sisters, regardless of where you are in your fear and anger, as you see what is coming across the railroad tracks and the reports of a government with a martial law. But you will also notice on the other hand that very few of my white family members are saying much about that except for maybe some inconvenience. Stop. I got you. We got you. Sounds good. Sounds good. So far, so good. You know, there's a fear frequency. You said uh, the creator put something on his heart to share. You know what I mean? It's a great message. It's all good. I just want to get some clarification when he says white, right? Because again, you know, you gotta, you gotta know, man, the um, the frequency that you're speaking, man, the frequency that you're connecting to when you say black and white. You know, when you give information, and yet you say the Hebrews are blacks. Now. We all know better. We know what this language does. We know how we curse. We're cursing, we're writing cursive with this English. And when you call us blacks, you're literally calling us wicked, atrociously wicked, or void of color, or pale, pale. When you call your people white, there's two whites, it's a forked tongue, that's just how it goes. There's a this way and that way, right? And these whites don't necessarily have a color. It's not a color, it's an energy, it's a frequency. Specifically, it's a living creature, especially a human being. What's a human being? I mean, that's where you get you know more into the drop. Are you a human being, right? Paganism, a being of one of the nine worlds of heathen belief. All right, so now we're getting somewhere because he called himself the, a Gentile. All right, you know, you, you're saying it. All right. The Most High would also call that a heathen. Gentile sounds nicer. Heathen is a little closer to the definition. And what's a white, right? W-I-G-H-T. What's a white, W-I-G-H-T? A ghost? Deity? Oh, a wraith-like creature? We're getting closer. We're getting closer. Oh, there's a whole island of them whites. There's a whole isle of white. We're getting closer. A demon. Monster. You have to be that to have the track record you got. Now, I don't mean that every white <laughs> is a white. You know what I'm saying? Again, it's got nothing to do with color because we know who we got invaded by. We know it's more and more war, so that snaps us out of that. But it don't, you know, put everybody off the hook and it damn sure don't, you know, by default graft you into our tree because of a story you want to believe about your people being grafted in a monster a demon a white ka ka now we're getting somewhere a demon a monster all right so let's talk about whites let's talk about white people We're just surfing the wave, man. Let's go. And the reason is because in the past, it has always been in your captivity as Hebrews, blacks. But the Most High, Yah, wants to remind you that this pandemic, this virus, and the events that you see are not according to what the past is, but is according to what is new. 
And the newness of what that means is your release. Oh, we got a release date. Let's go. Let go. And Gentile mm. captivity. Gentile captivity. And so that can lead you to rejoice, to know that over these last week, and especially these last few days, I have been bombarded with individuals that have, for the first time, come across my video and videos. And I can't imagine if others who are speaking this revelation within the Hebrew community would agree with me to say it's incredible the amount of people that are stumbling, they say, onto our videos, but the truth is bringing them into the revelation of who they really are. And that is the true chosen children of the Most High Yah, Hebrews, that great awakening. And so the the hardships that you see that are coming are not for you this time. But they are for my people. The demons, huh? The whites. Let's go. But my people don't recognize it or believe that they are above it. And what brings me to tears and what brings me shaking literally as I felt the most high God sharing this with me is not only do I get to see you rejoice for this, which is coming upon this nation is not for you, but for your release. Hmm. But then in my own selfish way, uh -oh. Uh -oh. I rejoice because not only has your God, the Most High Yah, revealed to me as he did to Rahab and other precious Gentiles in my history. In my history, all right, so this is strike, you know, number whatever. Yeah, I'm not really counting. And it's love to, you know, Dana Stevens. I, like he says, you know, a lot of people might be stumbling. I, I've never watched the Dana Stevens video, but I'm sure it got some drop. And I, you know, implore all of you to go dig on it, man, and, you know, you know, surf the wave. You know what I'm saying? Dodge all hijacks. And that's all we're talking about. But to refer to yourself as a precious Gentile, I mean, whoa, whoa, a precious Gentile. <laughs> to be a precious Gentile, I mean, truly, if you really want to, to be a precious Gentile, meaning that you're not of the seed of, you know, uh, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, whatever, you know what I mean? However you want to look at it, you're not of the, you know, seed of the, spiral of Adam, you know. To be a precious Gentile means that you're not jamming up the creator. It means that you're bringing people directly to Hawa, directly to your breath of security, right? To bring them anything else. We're about to watch the rest. To bring them anything else. To bring them to any version of this Jesus New Testament hijack, which is just Thoth, Mercury, to bring them anything else, is to jam up the creator. It's not to be a precious Gentile if you're not bringing them direct, because there is no other savior. But we're about to hear who his savior is. 
That's not a precious Gentile to come with another Savior. When Isaiah 43 clearly states there is no other Savior. Jesus ain't God. Or Jesus is God. But God ain't Hawa. God ain't the creator. God is referring to their dog star. The sign of Sephala. You know, the shepherd syphilis. Or Stephen the Christ. Estebanico. Zemore. So when you talk about my history, Gentiles, Gentiles are outside of Israel. Those Gentiles also look like the copper color Negro. Just because we're not just saying, oh, blacks are, <laughs> blacks are Israel. <laughs> you see the sort of dichotomy here. You know what I mean? I'm just, I just got to get the family out of the spell a little bit. You're coming from blacks are Israel. Blacks are many nations. Dana. Blacks are Moab. Blacks are the Amorites. Blacks are the Jebusites. Blacks are the Edomites. They're all so-called black. They're all copper color, copper tone, dark skin, color folk, Negroes, right? You would call them all Negroes. So he wants you to, you know, go in the perception that blacks are the chosen yada, and these whites are the Gentiles so that he can graft himself in even to the story so he can say my Gentile history, but you can't give them no history because the Gentile history still ain't even your history. What Gentile nation do you believe you are? You're not from Europe because the original Europeans are dark skinned people and Benjamin Franklin told you that. Oh, except the English make up the principal body of whites. So if Europe is black, let me use your words, <laughs> Africa is wholly black, and even Benjamin Franklin said America is wholly so, wholly tawny, wholly brown, dark copper color. 1828 Webster Dictionary says the definition of an American is the copper color races that were found here. And we know that these are the Hebrews that were just found here. Don't tell these people they're from Africa when these people are the Indians, are the Chickamauga, are the, you know, original flow, you know, connecting with their priest Khan, David, right here. My Gentile history is an insult to the other dark skinned nations that would also be considered Gentiles. And most of those Gentiles that you're referring to as, oh, these great Gentiles, even in the story, were still dark skinned people. So where do you whites fit in if that's how you're looking at it? Now, again, I'm not looking at this whole color coordination thing. I know that Israel could be lighter than light or darker than dark. I'm not here to differentiate about who's Israel, but who's the Gentile? Oh, the precious Gentile. I'm a precious Gentile. The other ones, these other precious Gentiles in my Gentile history. Well, you got to tell us who you are so we can know your history. Who are you? What history? Who are you really? Because none of us know. That's really the $64 million question. Who are you? Where'd you come from? Because you're not connected to any land indigenously on earth that we know of. So to be a righteous Gentile or a precious Gentile, you got to start at square one. And you can't be stealing nobody's history in 2020. Don't steal the Gentile history that you're reading about because it has nothing to do with you and your tribe. Nothing at all. You graft yourself into the Gentile history and then turn around and graft yourself into our history and our tree through the blood of Jesus or Yeshua HaMashiach, right? We have our own Joshua. And when you put the chronology together, all this is all happening in the 11th, 12th century. And that's, if David is popping off in the 12th century, if Prester John is popping off 
in the 12th century, 13th century, 14th century, where's the room for this Jesus? Because we know it's not 5 BC. We know a thousand years plus was added to our timelines by Scalinger Patavius. And when you put it back, you got the birth of this Joshua, according to Anatoly Fermenko, putting together the true chronology in Russia. And Russia plays heavy when you deal with chronology. You got to put your thousand years back. Now you're back in 900, 1,000, 1,100, 1,200. Where's Jesus? Where's your ya, Yahuwah or Yeshua? How, you know what I mean? I'm a Shia. Where does he fit in? You need Scalinger and Batavius' timeline to fit him in. And that's trash. So when you put a thousand years back, you got David, you got the real Joshua, or the Mormons know that Kitsukoto, they call him Jesus. The Mormons call Kitsukoto Jesus. Why? Because he's right there. They got their timeline right. They know that this Kitsukoto, this Joshua is the real Joshua. They're just flipping him into this Jesus New Testament situation in their Book of Mormon. You got to dodge all hijacks. If they're calling kids a cold of Jesus, then you know we're talking Joshua. That means that he's leading the Israelites right there in the 10th century, 11th century. That means you got Moses and Joshua rocking right there. You got Dawi following that right up in the Preston John flow. You got the Preston John letter in the 12th century, 1165, and on and on and on. Fountain of youth. They just are looking for over here, according to the last 500 years, after they just found the Naga right here, or the copper colored races found here, according to the 1828 Noah Webster Dictionary. I mean, we're just surfing the wave, man. So, we're not black. You are white. And now we're just trying to see, man, if it's uh, wrong or right. You know what I mean? Have you been naughty or nice, man? But according to our investigation, the Gentile history is not your history. And we already see you you know, having a flow of grafting yourself into other folks' history. And it's like, when will y'all ever stop this shit? If you for Israel, just rock in the code. Keep the commandments. Just keep the commandments, really. And it's, you know, big up the tribe, man. And, you know, connect with the creator only. You know what I mean? Stuff like that. But don't. Bring us no hijack and don't tell us that this is your history. None of it is your history. Let's go. As he did to Rahab and other precious Gentiles in my history. Mm. In the Bible. Your history has nothing to do with the Bible, bro. You're trying to find a place in that that word, our word, our book. Your people have nothing to do with that. They're nowhere in there. If we're talking albinos, we're still talking us. You're talking JPEF, you're still talking us. There's something else going on with you. Let's go. I mean, we want to know your history. We want to know your history. We want to know. We're investigating. We want to know where you come from. Let go. He revealed to me who you really are. Mm -hmm. And now gives me the honor to cleave to you. Mm, I don't know, y'all. I don't like that vibration. Gives you the honor to cleave to us. Do we have a choice? I mean, it sounds like it's a take. It sounds like we don't have a choice. It sounds like you're saying, hey, like it or not, I'm a precious Gentile and I'm going to be a part of your tree. I have the honor of being, it's like coming on our land, like, you know, history has proven, putting your flag down and saying, I have the honor of claiming this land and cleaving to this land. Did we invite you over here? No, I was sent over here with a divine will from, from God. Oh, so we just have to believe you. We have to believe it, right? 
We have to believe that you uh, have this honor. One, we got to believe you're honorable. Then we got to believe that, you know, it's, um, you know, in the divine will that you cleave to the house of Israel. In order to cleave to the house of Israel, you got to come correct and stop jacking other nations' history. Don't jack biblical history if it has nothing to do with you and your people. If you're going to learn from it, if you want to grow, if you want to connect to Hawa, the creator, if you want to connect to Hawa, the creator, keep the code. Hawa, Hawa will respect you more if you keep the code and shut up about everything else just by keeping the code. But if you want to talk and if you want to teach, Oh, you damn sure better come pure water. And all this talk about cleaving and my history. I mean, we've been jacked so much and hijacked so much. It just don't sit too well with us. It just don't flow in our cipher bowl, man. You really are. And now gives me the honor to cleave to you. Mm. My fellow Hebrew brothers and sisters I don't deserve mm. where I get to go with you I, I, who said you get to go anywhere I don't remember no nigga vote <laughs> saying hey uh, this Gentile gets to go this, you're just saying that the creator told you so and we're going to get real specific. He's not even really saying that the creator told him so. He's saying Jesus made it so. Yeshua HaMashiach in the New Testament died for my sins. And therefore, all Gentiles get to go to heaven. And he sounds so humble about it. But then he sounds very arrogant when he says these precious Gentiles, you know, these other precious Gentiles. So we sense the humility and we also sense the arrogance. Oh, welcome to the party, y'all. <laughs> welcome me. I'm cleaving to you. I don't know. I know I don't deserve it, but I'm here. I'm here, bitches. I'm here. There's nothing you can do about it. Nope, it's not up to you. The creator works through me and told me I get to go somewhere with you. Did he also tell you that there is no other savior? That whoever you think saved you so you can cleave to us, he can't save you. He can't take your sins away. We've been given an excellent new tune. Our ancient love song has been taken away. And this excellent new tune is only excellent if uh, it gives you some type of path or some type of purpose. Because if that's if this invasion didn't happen and this new tomb didn't happen, you wouldn't have no savior. Because you don't, you never knew Hawa, right? I mean, according to these, you know, nations' history, they never knew the Creator. The creator says, "I only knew, I only knew Israel." So how would you know us? How would you get to cleave to us? Let's hear it specifically. I deserve what my Gentile evangelical family members are about to receive. And it was nothing but the voice of the Most High Yah and the Ruach and my walk now with Yahshua Hamashik. Bang, ping, pow. Hold up, man. Hold up, man. Bing, ping, pow. <laughs> Yahoo, Yeshua, I'm a Shia. The Christ. A fancy word for Jesus, the Christ. And look at the look. He's so confident. And this is what saves him. But there is no savior beside 
Hawa. So he had to, he had to milk this thing for all he got just to bring you back to Jesus. Their God, their Zeus, that they must, it's within them to connect with Zeus. They worship Zeus before they came to this continent, you know, this land right here. They worship Jupiter before they came here. Apollo before they came here. Mercury before they came here. The stars before they came here. Their Hamashiach, their Christ, their anointed has always been Zeus. Mars. Nothing but the voice of the Most High Yah and the Ruach. And? And my walk now with Yahshua Hamashik. Bang. That has brought me to this place. So his walk with Jesus brought him to this place. Let's go. I know the grace. Let go, man. Let go, man. Stop hijacking the, the hijack. Of Yahshua Hamashik. Oh, now we're just... A you know, we had that Christian, we had that Christian preacher tinge the whole time, you know. I, I just got a spirit to reveal to y'all, you know. We've seen the infomercials, but now, man, it's become a Jesus commercial. Because he could have, I mean, if you want to be a precious Gentile, let me just talk to you, man. Let me stop, man. It's, it's late. I ain't slept yet. I had a long night. I've been doing things for the tribe. I've been doing things with the tribe. All praise of why. See how I did that? All praise of why. It's not about my walk with another entity, my walk with another deity, because they told me that this deity is my creator in flesh. What teaching is that? Are we just talking about Mithras? Zeras? Zarathustra, and Zarathustra. I mean, where, where do you want to go? We can go Egypt, we can go Atlantis. Where do you want to go? Because it's on and on cyclical. This story is cyclical. It's 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 in all these cultures, and the one thing you got in common is that Hawaii don't rock with none of it. Because there's only one Savior. So if you want to be a precious Gentile, you would say, all praise the Creator. I mean, you keep saying, yeah, all right, maybe that's as good as you can get, all right? So all praise the Creator, bang, bang. And my walk with the Creator, bang, bang. And the Creator, you know, works through me. He works through me, all right, fine, bang. But now you took us to a whole nother deity. Now, all that talk about us rejoicing, we got to hear from ourselves, man. We got to tell ourselves to rejoice because you're going to tell us to rejoice and then go worship Jesus. The voice of the Most High Yah and the Ruach and my walk now with Yahshua Hamashik that has brought me to this place. I know the grace of in the goodness of Yahshua Hamashik. The grace. So now we're in a, definitely in the New Testament, right? And he, through the grace of Jesus and the sacrifice of the crucifixion. Remember, I said it from the beginning. Who bore the sins of Israel? And go, go dig on that whole drop we did, breaking down the 430-year crucifixion of Ezekiel to bear the sins of the house of Judah and Israel. How do you skip over 430 years, or excuse me, 430 days of crucifixion to this new story, in this new testament, in this new tune that we're getting? Oh, because of that, nah, see, you can't, Leech on to Ezekiel because you know Ezekiel only did it for the tribe. You see, it's tribal when you talk about the Tanakh. It's tribal what Ezekiel did. He didn't do it for the Gentiles. Oh, he we can't claim it. he didn't do it for us. But there's Jesus though. There's Zeus though. He came to let he came to open the gates for all the 
all the whites, right? <laughs> all the heathens, right? Nah, man. Nah, man. Nah, man. He came to open the door for all the demons, all the monsters. He came to open the door for all the heathen, for all the whites, my people, he says, right? Let's get the last part, you know, then we're going to do a nice, you know, dismount here, man. Let's just keep it flowing, man. I'm just surfing the wave with the tribe and the wave is the vibration and the vibration will always be the law. And the Hakan told you that. Let's go. Because I know mm. it is only his grace and his goodness mm. that has given me the privilege. Look how emotional he's getting over Jesus, man. You know, out of respect, he mentions the creator. And then he goes on a monologue about Jesus. Dana, I know you got, you know, a lot of people that believe in, in Jesus that, you know, they enjoy hearing this. There's a big community out there. Don't, don't get lost in the numbers and don't let that inflate, you know, some level of, uh, you know, this mirage of truth. And give us a little truth with a whole lot of lie. Don't tell us, oh, you blacks are Hebrews and me white. Me white. I represent the Gentile. No, you white, you don't. Even the Gentile still looks like me, still looks like us. The Gentile you're referring to, these, these uh, you know, precious Gentiles still look like us. And some would say even are us. You know what I'm saying? Maybe, you know, not in their right mind or not in their right flow, you know, but I'll just say that they are still colored people, right? You got the heathen and they're still colored people. They're still colored tribes. They're still copper colored tribes. And that is what it is. If you're going to come and represent the creator, you're going to have to let people have their own history. And you're going to have to come humble and say, you know what? Here's my history because this is what I do know. Or I don't, I don't even know my history. Maybe you don't even know. Maybe you don't even know your own real history. That's cool. But you got to see this uh, pattern of grafting and this praising of Jesus in the Hebrew name, in the Hebrew tongue. I'll call him Yeshua HaMashiach. There is no other savior, but look how he praises his savior, which you know ain't the creator because he didn't get all emotional about the creator. He's getting emotional about Jesus. Hmm. <laughs> because I know it is only his grace and his goodness that has given me the privilege and the permission to cleave mm, to you. Giving me the permission. You see, he, he uses both sides. First is, I'm so honored to go where you're going. Whoa. <laughs> Who said that? The creator told me so, really. Because, you know, this judgment hasn't happened yet. You don't know what's going to happen. How do you know you're going where the Hebrews are going? You want to believe you're going where the righteous, the righteous are going. You want a piece of this lot? You want a piece of this inheritance? You got to come correct and you got to start at square one. You got to start at square one. What's rule number one? Don't put no power beside your power, in front of your power, next to your power. And if you say, well, I believe Jesus is God, that's your belief, man. And let me tell you, 
is going to get you fired on. Because the creator never said that. There's no script in Tanakh that says that. And if you want to bring in some new testy, you bring in something that goes to the Greek, not the Hebrew. You bring in something that's not indigenous to this land right here, that doesn't tell our story at all, that talks about turning the other cheek rather than what Joshua had to do, slicing and dicing giants to get us to the promised land. Literally, our Mashiachs get us somewhere. Our Mashiachs, you know, get us across the water. Even, even Joshua parted the Jordan, made the waterfall cease so the children could cross. Joshua did that miracle. Oh, Jesus walked on water. Joshua parted the Jordan River and made the waterfall cease to fall so the children can cross safely to the promised land. But Jesus walked on water. Which miracle, I don't know, has more uh, uh, miraculousness? Walking on water, that's pretty good. How about controlling water to a point where you can part a heavy body of, of river, of water, of sea, Stop the waterfalls from falling. But no one want to talk about Joshua's power and Joshua's miracle because they want to give that all to the other Joshua. So they, they put this other Joshua in the dark. They hide him in the closet. They say, oh, yeah, 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 we know. You know he got you to the promised land, just like Kitsukoto, who the Mormons call Jesus. Kitsukoto got his tribe to the promised land. He wore a robe filled with crosses, according to Gerald Massey in the Book of the Beginnings. Left a paku. But no one wants to talk about Joshua was a miracle. Joshua was a prophet. Moses laid his hands on him as he was dying, passed his life force, passed his energy. I mean, it's a lot. When we put our indigenous history, and that's where the Kitsukoto, that's where the Kalelus artifacts. Research Kalelus. Dane, I know you're watching. Research Kalelus. C-A-L-A-L-U-S. The artifacts found right here in Arizona with the Hebrew inscriptions, the dragon, you know what I'm saying, uh, embroidery all over the swords, calling out Israel the fourth, Israel the fifth, connecting that with these migrations or Exoduses and wars popping off with Jacob, everything, all these artifacts right here. And who's the original people, as you know? The blacks, you call them, no, the copper color cons found right here, all the Hebrews right here. Now we put our timeline back. This Jesus you're talking about is really who they call Israel the fourth or Kitzakoholt. Yeah, this is Israel the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, all this connected to the Tinoctitlan flow, the Anasazi flow, the Hoho Kong, the Magalan. These are all Israelites. Going out of the famine of the four corners toward Mexico, into Mexico, Tinoctitlan popping off. All this, what, 1200s, 1300s, right here. Who was crucified? Who bore the sins of Israel? You're going to skip over Ezekiel's 430 days. You can't give him thanks because he didn't do it for you. According to your story, Jesus did it for you. That's your Hamashiach. That's your anointed. That's your Christ. And that's your Savior. Or else you just would have gave, you know, praise to the creator only. And if you're not going to do that for us, you can't do nothing for us. You can have your audience. You can have your folks that enjoys Zeus as much as you do, that enjoys Jupiter as much as you do. But it's blasphemous to give the children of Israel a bone, knowing that they're broken, give them something so that they can say, oh, I feel so secure now, I'm Israel, and then give them Jesus and go, go on a Jesus soliloquy, a Jesus monologue at the end to bring us back to something that conquered us, the God and the power that came to conquer us. And then we got to turn the other cheek. Does that sound, uh, does it sound like it, uh, it jives for us to be the meek? But the meek will inherit the earth, huh? So we should be the meek.
You can't mix the teachings up, Dana. There's only one savior for Israel. And if you're going to be a precious Gentile, bring the people to the creator only. You think the creator would be upset that you brought him directly to the creator, to the path? The ball was right out in front and you just swung him. You know what I'm saying? Hit a home run for the tribe and say, hey, keep the commandments. Tell the tribe to keep the commandments is all you got to do. Tell the tribe to keep the code is all you got to do. This Jesus might have long. This ain't the direction you want to head. It's the fourth quarter, Dana. Wake, wake. And the Ruach and my walk now with Yahshua Hamashik that has brought me to this place. I know the grace and the goodness of Yahshua Hamashik. Because I know it is only his grace and his goodness that has given me the privilege and the permission. Bang. It is only, he said, it, it is only his grace. So only this Savior has given him the permission to cleave to us. Not Hawa, not the creator of the heaven and the earth, not the creator, but his son, Jesus, gave Dana permission to say he's going where I'm going, where you going, where we go. And it's ain't no, you know, Dana slander fest. I'm just saying, wake up, my naga. We don't got time for this shit. Dana, if you're going to come at us, come at us correct. Don't break code number one right through the door and tell us that Jesus gave you permission to rock with the tribe. Dana, we don't fuck with Jesus. We don't fuck with Zeus. We don't fuck with Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus. Dana, Joshua got us to our promised land. Joshua parted the Jordan. Joshua had 12 men from each tribe, 12 disciples. Joshua sliced and diced all hijacks to get us there. We remember our ancestors, Dana, our ancestors, our history. We know the more and more war we connect with that. And these are, in many cases, the Gentiles that you're referring to, other what will be called Moors, confederacies, but some choosing up. But you're telling us that your Jesus gave you permission to rock with the tribe and we're just supposed to just take it and everyone's just supposed to eat it up. Show me paperwork, Dana. I mean, you know, this is captivity, right? This is prison. You got to show your paperwork, man. If you rocking with, you know what I'm saying, the most high, <laughs> show your paperwork, man. Don't, don't tell us. The most high sent you. And then only because of Jesus do you have permission. That's like Columbus saying, I do this for Ferdinand and Isabella. Because they gave me permission to conquer you. Jesus gave you permission to rock with our inheritance. You and who else? He was hung from a tree, right? His blood... His sacrifice gave you permission. Dana, we were sacrificed. This Jesus is a symbolic reference to our indigenous sacrifice. That symbol didn't even exist until after we were mutilated, murdered, tortured, babies smashed against the rocks. And you want to talk about this Jesus crucifixion or this Jesus giving you permission? They came in the name of Jesus. I know it slips off your tongue better when you say Yeshua HaMashiach, Joshua the Christ, or Joshua the Anointed, Joshua. You know, we're talking Jesus the Christ. Y'all following these little loopholes, and all you're doing is saying the same damn thing. That gave you permission. We were sacrificed. We were crucified for our own transgressions. We 
if anything, we <laughs> are making a way for you to rock or do anything if we, you know what I'm saying, have transgressed it, open it up to the Gentiles. And if you want to fall under that, cool. But do it righteously. And to do it righteously means you ain't breaking the code. Our fall opened it up for you. Our fall. The children are now being made jealous while the Gentile is raised up because the playground was co was constructed for the children. The children didn't abide by the code, by the rules of the playground, so the Most High let other children play, other Gentiles play, right? Not out of love for the Gentiles so that he can teach his children a lesson. Now, when his children get in order, what happens? You just grafted in. In order to do that, you got to be righteous. To be righteous means you ain't transgressing the code. To not transgress the code means you ain't breaking the code. Number one, there's only one Savior. Put no power, no God before your God. This soliloquy to your God is not a soliloquy and a message and a love note to the Creator. This is a love note to Yeshua HaMashiach. This is a love note to Jesus. I know you think it's all one thing, though, right? That's what the church has taught us. That's what the Council of Trent has taught us. That's what the Council of Nicaea has taught us. That's what the Pisos and the Flavians, Josephuses, you know what I mean? This whole, uh, you know, switcheroo, this, ne this new tune, this necromancy. Let's go. Honor. <laughs> To cleave to you. Oh, one more time, one more time. My fellow Hebrew brothers and sisters. <laughs> one more time. He revealed to me who you really are. And now gives me the honor to cleave to you. My fellow Hebrew brothers and sisters. I don't deserve where I get to go with you. But I deserve what my Gentile evangelical family members are about to receive. And it was nothing but the voice of the Most High Yah and the Ruach and my walk now with Yahshua Hamashik that has brought me to this place. I know the grace and the goodness of Yahshua Hamashik because I know it is only his grace and his goodness that has given me the privilege and the permission to cleave to you, his precious chosen children. So to my Hebrew brothers and sisters, I want to say this to you. Rejoice. Rejoice. For that which you see is coming is not coming for you this time. It is coming for the Gentiles who are now about to reap what they have sowed and to get justice from the Most High Yah through His Son, Yahshua Hamashik. Wow. That's your dismount to get justice. One more time. I can't make this shit up. From the Most High Yah through His Son, Yahshua. So the Creator can't get justice on His own, right? What makes you think that the Creator doesn't rock on His own to get justice? I mean, did the Creator have to go through His Son? To get justice for David? 
When David cried out, Hawa is my rock. Did he say Hawa through his son? Oh no, his son wasn't born yet. You damn right. Because if that was so important that suddenly the creator won't be your rock, that his son would be your rock, don't you know that would be in every single book in the Tanakh? It would be so important that you don't get it twisted, that you know for a show, for a fact, that you're going to have to go through his son. Wouldn't that be all through the Tanakh? It wouldn't, you, you wouldn't have to try to pick through Isaiah 53 and some Genesis 126. That's the image. And Jesus, that must be Jesus. You wouldn't have to do that if it was that important as you're making it. To have to, the creator got to go through his son to get justice now. The creator got to go through Jesus to get justice. The creator can't just get. In my distress, I called on Hawa. What did Hawa do? How did he get justice for Dawi? Then the earth did shake and quake. He didn't go through Jesus. The earth started shaking and quaking. The foundations also, the mountains trembled. He didn't go through Jesus. The mountains started to tremble. They were shaking because he was wroth, pissed off. He heard the cries of Dawi. Why do you wake up and seek the creator and David? Because the creator hears David. He hears the cry. It's a frequency and you're in a frequency war. It's a function and we're putting it all together. Smoke arose from his nostrils and fire out of his mouth did devour. Did he go through Jesus to get this smoke? Did he go through Jesus to get this fire? To light any flame, did he have to go through his son? And you think after the creator is telling us all through the scripture that this next exodus, you ain't even, you ain't even going to remember. He said this would be... No longer in remembrance the old exodus. This exodus is going to be extraordinary. It's going to pop off. Oh, yeah, but I'm going to have to go through my son. See, they have to, you know, connect to this Jesus, Yahuwah, Yeshua, Hamashiach, who is also supposed to be a son of David. <laughs> but David will rise up, right? Jeremiah 30, I will raise him up for you. Let's get this right quick, man. You know, we, we just getting our dismount popping off. We just getting our dismount popping off. Love to come fresh. Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of trembling. Right, we're going through it. Unto all the people round about. And when they shall be, and when they shall be in the siege, my naga, we in the siege right now, both Judah and Jer both Judah and against Jerusalem. And in that day will I make Jerusalem a burdensome stone for all people. And that burden, and all that burden themselves with it shall be cut in pieces. Though all the people of the earth be gathered together against it in that day, says a walk, I will smite every horse with astonishment and his rider with madness. And I will open my eyes upon the house of Judah. A wise now opening his eyes. That's what Dana's getting. And like I said, he got a great message. But at the end, you're just bringing us back to the hijack, man. And that makes it even worse, man. Just, just bring us to the creator only is all we asking. Bring us to the commandments. Bring us to the code. Don't say they're done away with and now through Jesus this and now through Jesus that. You're a Christian. You're a fancy Hebrewized Christian. You're a Christian with some knowledge of who we are. Some knowledge of who we are. But you still come with the same hijack mentality to... Take us to a false God, false deity, false entity that you want to praise as giving you permission to cleave to the house of Israel. I thought the creator got to give you permission. But no, Jesus gave me permission. That sounds like hijack city. And we dodge all hijacks at all costs. Again, I will open my eyes upon the house of Judah and will smite every horse of the people with blindness and the governors, the chiefs of Judah shall say in the heart, the inhabitants of Jerusalem shall be my strength and Hawa, their power, their power is the creator, their power, their strength is the creator.
Now we got a new test and a new tune to where our strength can't be the creator. It got to be through Jesus, through Jesus. Now he says the creator has to go through his son. You do know Israel is his son, his daughter. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. Hawah also shall save the tents of Judah first. Nothing about the Gentile, right? We're going to get it. We're going to get it. <laughs> and the glory of the house of David. Oh, David plays. Not the son of David. We're talking the end of days. Zechariah 12. And the glory of the inhabitants of Jerusalem do not. And the glory of the inhabitants of Jerusalem do not magnify themselves against Judah. So the reason why why saving Judah first is that the glory, so that the glory of the house of David and the glory of the house of David and the inhabitants of Jerusalem do not magnify themselves against Judah. Hawah also shall save the tents of Judah first, that the glory of the house of David and the glory of the inhabitants of Jerusalem do not magnify themselves against Judah in that day shall Hawah defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem and he that is feeble among them. Even if you're scared now, even if you feel the fear now, feeble, you feel weak, you feel helpless. I feel you. We all, we all feeling all this, you know, in different times. And then we got to charge up, right? We feel feeble sometimes. I do too. Among them in that day shall be as David. Even the weak will be as strong as David when we get charged up. And the house of David shall be as Hawa. And the angel, the dragon, the dragon, smoke out of his mouth, out of his nostrils, fire out of his mouth. The dragon, the saraf, the fiery ones, the burning ones, with six wings in Isaiah 6. As the angel, as the dragon of Hawa before them. So the weak, the feeble shall be as David and the house of David as Hawah. Wow. And the dragon of Hawah before them. And it shall come to pass in that day that I will seek to destroy all the nations that come against Jerusalem. And I will pour upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and of supplication. Oh, this grace is all about you filling the transgression against Hawah. And they shall look upon me whom they have pierced. Now you're feeling the transgression, the sin against Hawah of our ancestors, of, of our actions. And you mourn, man, as one mourns for his only son and shall be bitterness for him as one that is bitter for his firstborn. And that day there shall be a great mourning in Jerusalem as the morning in Hadradrimon, in the valley of Magadan. I mean, we're mourning because we now see Hawa, and Hawa sees us, and we feel the, the wrongness, man, the transgression of choosing another power. That's why we got to be certain. That's why we got to be certain that we're not putting nothing beside our creator. And when you come with all this, man, oh, you're Israel. Blacks are Israel. Nah, man. Blacks are atrociously wicked. Israel's not. And if Israel is, Israel gets judged. And we just got judged. Blacks are Israel. Jesus saves me. So Jesus is going to save you from, from this. You know. <laughs> I mean, will Jesus save you from this? <laughs> will Jesus save you from this? Or will Hawah save you from this? Well, what do you say, Dana? Because we know. Oh, yeah, man. One more time. Isaiah 43. Allah. And then I'm going to leave you this link 
So you know it's our time to rejoice. And it's being confirmed and validated everywhere we look, everywhere we turn. Alawa. All praise. Our frame. Our shaper. Israel's only savior. Israel's only savior is Hawa. For I am Hawa, their power, the Holy One of Israel, your savior. I gave Egypt for your ransom. Ethiopian CB for you. Since you were precious in my sight. He ain't talking about the Gentile. Oh, but Jesus gave me permission to rock with y'all. Jesus said so. Since you were precious in my sight, Israel, thou has been honorable and I have loved you. Oh, but now the Gentiles are grafted in because Israel didn't want the blessing. I have loved you. Therefore, will I give men for you and people for your life. Fear not, I am with you. I will bring your seed from the east, gather them from the west. I will say to the north, give up. And to the south, give, keep not back, bring my sons from afar, my daughters from the ends of the earth, everyone that is called by my name. For I have created him for my glory. I have formed him. Yeah, I made him bring forth the blind people that have eyes and the deaf that have ears. Let all the nations be gathered together. Let the people be assembled. We're talking about assembling drop nation. Who among them can declare this and show us former things? Let him bring forth their witnesses that they may be justified who justifies you he says hawa got to justify us through jesus let them hear <laughs> say it is true you are my witnesses says hawa and my servant who i have chosen that you may know and believe me now nah, believe dana that that the creator sent him to tell you that you're israel and then tell you to you know go serve jesus you know what i'm saying understand i am he before thee there before me there was no god form there shall be none neither shall there be after me i even i am a while beside me there is no savior i mean we're just talking isaiah and we do know one thing isaiah 14 we do know one thing we do know one thing, for a while we'll have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land that the strangers shall be joined with them. But which strangers? We're not just talking whites. The strangers were melanated. The strangers were copper color too because all copper color, all skin folk ain't can folk. We know each other by vibration frequency don't make it two-dimensional white and black the whole board is copper color copper tone the whole board is so-called negro and they fit into all these pieces and places with tribes that are called heathens tribes that are called gentiles don't just be white and claim the world of the gentile that's being grafted in through the blood of jesus that's christianity dana and you're bringing us a mixed message you're bringing us a poo sandwich and I'm saying this out of love. While you have time, connect to Hawa directly. There's no other savior. Stop praising another savior and saying that this other savior gave you permission as a stranger to be joined with us. They shall cleave to the house of Jacob. This is what he's talking about, right? Cleaving to the house of Jacob and the people shall take them and bring them to their place. And the house of Israel shall possess them. Did he say that you will possess me? Or did he say that, oh, I'm going where you're going. I have permission to cleave to you. I get your blessing, right? I get your inheritance. I don't know why I'm just so honored to go wherever Israel's going. You're going to be possessed. According to Isaiah 14, according to the word of Hawa, the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of Hawa for servants and handmaids. Did old Dana here say, I can't wait to be a servant of Israel. I can't wait to be your servant. No, he didn't come humble and say, I can't wait to be your servant. He said, I'm cleaving to you according to Yeshua HaMashiach. 
Jesus. I'm just, uh, I'm going where you're going, man. Who would have thought it? I don't deserve it, but I'm definitely taking this opportunity to cleave. But if you're going to cleave, stranger, then you will be possessed. Israel shall possess them in the land, and you will be a slave or a servant in the kingdom. And don't trip. We're not like y'all. We don't, you know, bash your babies against walls and beat you with whips, you know, but every kingdom needs servants. You dig? And the Gentiles that is precious will be servants and they shall take them captives who captives they were and they shall rule over their oppressors. Yeah, that's the Negro story. You can't cleave your way into that unless you're ready to serve these Negroes. You know what I'm saying? The book of Jubilees, chapter 10. Remember, man, their power that they serve. When you talk about these watchers, and they call them out by name as Mestima, right? In Jubilees 10, verse 8. And this chief of the spirits, Mestima, came and said to Hawa, the creator, let some of them remain before me. Let them listen to my voice. So this is their leader. This is their Satan, right? This is their this is their evil ones, right? So let's go. Because this this is their Satan on the earth. But now they're calling them by name. Let some of them remain. Let them listen to my voice and do as I say. For if some of them are not left unto me, I shall not be able to execute the power of my will on the sons of men. So they're hijacked, my naga, my naga. Even they're hijacked, my naga. Even their hijack got to still go to the creator. Even my steamer still has to say, creator, please let these fallen ones remain so that they listen to my voice. Make them hear me so I can do my will to hijack the house of Israel. Why did the creator give him permission? Because somebody got to do the dirty work. Somebody got to get you back in line. Somebody got to be the goon. But when you're in order, there's no goon on you. This Mastima is not against you. He's not even against Hawa. He's, he's asking for permission. So don't worry about their powers and their Illuminati's and their stuff. Because their power, their master still serves the creator. And the creator let them rock. He gave, he made them listen. He made them listen. Why? Nah. All right. For these are for corruption and leading astray before my judgment. So those that were going to be corrupt, we're going to be tempted and going to be corrupt because you need somebody to do the dirty work to weed out the wheat and the tares, right? <laughs> who's, who's corrupt? Those that are transgressing the law. What's the law? Number one, don't put no power before your power. Don't choose no other savior when there's only one. And don't believe the hype that this, you know, Man came in flesh to die for you, to open up the gates for the Gentile. Hawam made his children sit down for a minute while we watched other kids play on our playground to put us into a, a feeling of jealousy like we put the creator into a feeling of jealousy by serving these idols and going astray. Mastema made sure those that were going to go astray went astray for corruption and the leading astray before my judgment. For great is the wickedness of the sons of man. Let the tenth part of them remain. So now you got these hijacks. Now you got your Jesus popping up. Now you got your Zeus popping up because the creator allowed it. No one has to drop on the creator. Don't ever believe the hype, man. And I'll leave this link so you know. I mean, first of all. Don't ever believe the hype. Don't ever believe the hype, Dana. And I say this out of love because I know you do good work. Don't hijack the children of Israel. Don't reverse any good that you are coming with by bringing them to a false Messiah. The son of David ain't no David. Gentiles who are now about to reap what they have sowed. And to get justice, justice from the Most High Yah through His Son Yahshua. 
You got to go through his son to get justice. Did David have to go through his son to get justice in Psalms 18? Did Hawaii say that you're going to have to go through his son to get justice all throughout all these prophecies in the latter days? Nah, I don't think so. I think whenever we look at prophecies in the latter days, the latter days, my not. Whenever we look at prophecies in the latter days, it still don't mention no Jesus, Yeshua, HaMashiach. And that's why they try so hard to imply that we're talking about that. But in reality, Hosea 3 and 5, you're going to go all this time, right? You went all this time because you've been a harlot. And I said unto her, thou shalt buy for me many days. Thou shalt not play the harlot for another man, another power. Oh, but Jesus saves me. Jesus gave me permission. You're playing the harlot. For the children of Israel shall abide many days without a king, without a prince, without sacrifice, without an image. Dana, we lost our image, man. Don't just tell us all you blacks are Hebrews and I represent the Gentiles and I'm now grafted because I got permission from Jesus. That's what we're taking from. No matter what good you try to tell us, rejoice, rejoice in what? That Zeus will save us, not our creator. Because afterwards, verse 5, shall the children of Israel return and seek Hawa their power and David their king. In the what? Latter days. I don't know, Dana. We're talking about the latter days, right? This would be a great time to mention a son of the creator through the flesh that we now have to go through in the end times or the latter days. Instead, we have specific script over and over again. David, I will raise up for you. Jeremiah 30, I will raise up. I will raise up. Hawa, the children will return. The children of what? Israel will return. Seek their creator and David, because the creator hears the vibration. This is the function. This is Prester John, priest, king. John means king. Khan, king. And shall fear or respect obey the creator and his goodness in the latter days david whom i will raise up for them allow wow david whom i will raise up where do you fit your jesus in when the tanakh is full of prophets and prophetic you know what I mean? Breakdowns left and right. For it shall come to pass in that day, says, Oh, why I will break the yoke from off his neck. This is the freedom we're talking about, right, Dana? We should be rejoicing. The yoke is being broken off. We'll burst their bonds with freedom, right? This we're talking freedom. And the strangers shall no, shall no more serve themselves of him. So all we hear about the strangers is that we're no longer going to have to serve the strangers and that the strangers will have to serve us, Isaiah 14, but they shall serve Hawah, their power, and David, their king, whom I will raise up unto them. Where is Jesus, Dana? Where is Yeshua, Yeshua HaMashiach? But we have to go through Yeshua HaMashiach to get to the Creator. But the Creator will raise up David. But we got to go through the son of David. No, the son of the creator. Which one is he? Is he, is he the son of David or the son of the creator? If he's an immaculate conception and he's not the seed of David, then why is he called son of David? He should just be the son of the creator. Why must he tie himself into the David lineage if he's just the immaculate, you know, son of the creator, God in flesh? If he's not the son of David, is he the son of David? He's an immaculate conception. He has no seed, no father's seed. His, he's, he's the creator. How can he be the son of David? But he's the son of David, right? David, their king who I will raise up for them. I mean, we're just dodging all hijacks at all costs, Dana. At all costs, man. 
Allah. Amen. Shalom. Shalom. One more time. For the Gentiles who are now about to reap 